Hey everybody, Alex from Native Scripting here again. Today I want to show you some tips and tricks on how you can implement platform specific code in Native Script without littering your code with pesky if else then statements all over the place that we tend to do. We tend to check for the platform, but you can do without that. Let me show you how to do this, and we're going to do this the clean way. So this is going to be a series of videos, and in this video, this is the first one, I'm going to show you how to do this with TypeScript using classes. Let's start. Let's start by beginning a new Angular application using the NativeScript CLI, and I'm just going to use the default Hello World template. If you don't know how to use the NativeScript CLI, you can check out the free course on getting started with NativeScript. There's the Angular version and the core version on nativescripting.com. If you've already done this before, then good for you. Let's keep going. Once your app is created, I'm going to just change directory into that folder and then open it up in my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And you know what? Let's run this so it's live syncing all our changes automatically to the simulator. The Hello World template just creates a master detail app for us where you have a list of football players. And if you tap on one of them, you'll see the details. And in our code, you'll see that we have an items component, if you're not familiar with this. And the items component is an Angular component, and it has a list view that shows our items. When we initialize the component, we pull those items, which are the football players, right from the item service. And the item service just has a hard-coded list of items. There's the array with our football players, and this getItems method returns them all. So the first thing I want to show you is how to make this item service class different for each platform. We're going to make it different for Android and we're going to make it different for iOS. Yet it's still going to be the same class. And you might say, Alex, why would I want to do this? Well, uh, maybe you want to access some native code, which NativeScript allows you to do right from JavaScript. Or maybe you want to instantiate completely different UI controls through code for Android and for iOS. I don't know. Whatever reasons you may have in the future, this will let you do it, and this will let you do it neatly. I'm going to start by creating a TypeScript declaration file, and declaration files are d.ts files. So this one's called item.service.d.ts. And here's where I'll declare a class called item service. Notice the class name is exactly the same that we've had already. The only difference is instead of exporting it, I'm going to declare this class in the declaration file. This class currently has two functions in it, get items and get item. I'm just going to copy these from an existing class and paste them in our declaration. And I'll remove the body of the functions so they're just left as declarations instead of implementations. And let's import our item class. All right. Now this item service.ts file is something we don't need anymore. We need platform specific files here. So we're going to create we're actually going to rename this file to item.service.android.ts. And I'll create another file called item.service.ios.ts. I'll just copy the code from the Android file into the iOS file. And just to clean it up, I'm going to delete this itemservice.js file. So now we should be left with three files, item.service.d.ts file, item.service.android.ts, and item.service.ios.ts. The declaration file is useful, so you can import this class into our component. And the Android and iOS files are useful because they provide the actual implementation. Now, the whole point of this is to demonstrate that these Android and iOS files can do different things. So we need to differentiate them somehow. So this get items method here, I'm going to have them return different things based on the platform. So instead of returning all the items, I'm going to filter them. Here, I'm going to return only the items where the item ID is less than five. And on the Android side, I'm going to filter the items and only return the ones where the ID is greater or equal to 23. So I should get the last three football players for Android and the first three football players for iOS. I'm going to open up a new tab in the terminal and start up the Android emulator so we can look at them side by side. While that's starting up, let's take a look at iOS. And we have three players there, the first three. And after Android starts up, we see that the last three football players are showing. Perfect. So how does this really work? Well, when the native script CLI encounters a .android.ts file, it's going to build that TS file into a JavaScript file, but it's going to remove the Android part from the file name and just leave you with item.service.js when we're building for Android. Now, when it builds for iOS, it's going to do the same thing, but remove the iOS part. So on each platform, we're going to end up with item dot 
service.js file. But the implementation of it is going to be different on each platform because we've created two different implementations. So this shows you one technique of how we can do it by declaring a class and then splitting up that class into implementations that are platform specific. What if you're not using uh, Angular or what if you're not using uh, a class-based approach and you're just using a JavaScript functional-based approach? Well, we're going to take a look at splitting up into platform-specific functions in the next video in the series. So check that out. Mm -hmm.